welcome back to Who Been Espresso today. It's been a bit of a delayed one, I will admit. I mean, Fury from the Deep did come out nearly two weeks ago by the time that I get this video out. So, this one's been taking a little longer than I expected. I hope to get it out the weekend after I um, actually unboxed it the following weekend, but that wasn't to be because life is stressful. <laughs> um, going back to school is stressful and everything's just a bit a bit stressful and I've got lots of work to do and it's just, it's a bit all over the place but we're getting we're getting used to it and I'm finally getting around to recording my review of Fury from the Deep. This is my review of the actual story. I have already unboxed the Fury from the Deep steelbook. You can check that video out. Um, just look up my channel down below. Just see my blog. I'll try and link it at some point. Um, but I did review of the faces ones and I'll get my opinion on that but because I'm going to try and keep doing it for each of these upcoming animated releases depending on obviously uh, if I have the time obviously but yeah we're going to talk about the faceless not the faceless ones Fury from the Deep sorry uh, first of all I know that there is some people out there who probably haven't seen it particularly if you're in the US or Canada you're obviously not going to have been able to see this story yet because it's not even out I, mean, I don't even think the faceless ones is even out in a America slash Canada yet so we're going to do a bit of a spoilery free sort of section and then we're going to go on to the spoilery section so first of all I think this is one of the things that's been maybe the most debated about this release is actually the animation quality now the animation quality is a bit hit and miss here I think um, personally the backgrounds the actual backdrops and everything look gorgeous honestly they look so well detailed and everything it just looks lovely throughout I think the way they did the tentacles, they animated the tentacles, they looked great. There were certain, there were certain things that looked really good. However, <laughs> however, this is a big however. I, I remember saying when I saw the trailer that the, the sort of, like the way they matched the dialogue to the actual animated characters wasn't necessarily as good as it had been in past releases. I don't. I believe this is actually a new company that's animated this, and I'm not going to complain because it means that we've had two animated stories this year, whereas we'd normally have one. So as much as I am glad it, <laughs> glad that this happened, I would maybe have rathered that maybe, at least if it was me, I would have maybe used the other company to do this story because I feel like their strengths were very much would have been needed or maybe to combine them actually because I think the backgrounds and the backdrops and everything here look much better like the sets and everything the animated sets and everything look much better than the sort of normal sets you get so maybe combine the efforts of the two teams to get the character work from I don't know who does the team the animation normally and then do a combined effort I don't know that probably be really expensive but I mean you know like I know Fury from the Deep is one that someone has, everyone has wanted for such a long time so I feel like if they were going to do this maybe do, I don't know I don't know which company is more expensive or less expensive to hire for all I know this company might be more expensive but I mean you know I feel like for stories like fan favorite stories I know like everyone's got different fan favorite stories and you know it kind of feels a bit like a let, bit of a letdown because this has been such a hyped up story but yeah as I said it does look really good there are a couple of things I want to note. Um, color versus black and white. I think it usually depends. Usually, they have not included. <laughs> I know I'm a bit of a stickler for this, but the aspect ratio. When you watch it in black and white, it does it in full screen, which is not something I like. <laughs> I mean, like when I watch the black and white version on the fa faceless ones, I like to have it in the correct aspect ratio because I really like that aspect ratio for some reason. Um, so whether they didn't include it on this release to have it in that correct aspect ratio is kind of a bit a bit sad because I like that ratio. And admittedly, like I don't know, it kind of feels a bit odd in black and white. Whereas normally it usually works, whereas I thought it looked a bit odd. I've watched half of it in colour and half of it in black and white, and I definitely think it looked better in colour. Having said that, I do think that the mood was definitely there in the black and white one, in the tunnels and everything. The tunnels look gorgeous. But yeah, I mean, there's just a couple of odd things like how tall they've made Patrick Troughton and his sort of really big chin for some reason that sort of just bother me a bit. But apart from that, I do think it's it's hit and miss. I liked, I liked it a bit. In terms of the actual story, it is a classic, so I was probably going to like the story a lot anyway. But yeah, I really did like the story. I think a lot of the elements of the story were really well executed. And it, it kind of makes me sad because it's actually such a great story and we'll never actually be able to see it in its sort of 
beautiful glory. But from now on, I'm going to sort of go into sort of spoilers here about the story and well, some key elements that I have to talk about. So if you haven't seen it yet, or you're waiting to see it, or maybe I mean, there are a lot of people who are sort of over 50 years old now. This story, so I mean. People have probably read up on the internet <laughs> the spoilers. I'm sure people have read the novelization or listened to audio narrations or stuff like that. So if you've done all that, you're probably not going to need to sort of avoid this section because you already know the story. But yeah, so I'll just say, yeah, that's basically if you don't want to avoid if you want to avoid spoilers, leave now. Okay. So the main thing I wanted to talk about that I didn't get to talk about is Victoria's exit, which is obviously it's such a beautiful scene actually because I mean I'm kind of sad that we didn't Evil of the Dark first because I've never been able to see the full character progression of Victoria but from what I've seen of her before she always seems quite quite timid particularly at the start in the web of fear and it's nice to see her sort of grow into her own in this story I mean, I, she gets I think she de- learns that maybe the Doctor's life isn't for her I think it's nice that she gets to be able to have her moment in this story and that scene on the beach is just so sad. Honestly, her and Jamie, they were so, like, I honestly felt for Jamie. I mean, we'll never know what his true expressions were, but at the, from the animation, it certainly looked like maybe they were hinting at some kind of romance there. I mean, I probably always ship the second Doctor and Jamie forever, but you, there is something about uh, Jamie and Victoria. I think, I think maybe it's because they're both from the past, I think they feel a connection together that maybe Jamie doesn't feel with Zoe or Polly and I think that kind of helps. I mean, it's from around the same period. I think give or take a hundred years or so. I mean, so it's, but I think they they share a bond that I don't think Jamie shared with any of the other companions. So it was quite sad seeing that departure on screen. Um, I really liked the sort of elements of the sort of mind over matter throughout this story sort of having to resist the, the weed and the sort of overpowering nature of the creature in the story I also really liked sort of I really loved the aesthetic of the entire story I thought the atmosphere the music it was all there like it was super moody and super vibe sort of 60s vibe and it was ironic because I'm actually learning about sort of energy sources in geography class at the moment so we were learning about um, the gas mains and everything and then I watched this story and thought, oh yeah, that is sort of similar. So to go from knowing about all that to just going into the story also kind of helps to have a little hint about it. We also see the second Doctor's first use of the sonic screwdriver in this story. I mean, it's it's a bit of a bit of a hor- bit of a bad prop to be honest. It's just sort of a pen light really, but it's nice to have that crucial moment in Doctor Who history sort of in a way existing again. It doesn't officially exist again because it will never be the same but it's nice to have that sort of scene another classic scene sort of existing um i love the sea the sort of i love the way the tardis sort of materializes at the start um i think it's really that sort of nice sort of way in the sea and the, the, they have the rowboats and everything by that seaside i think it's quite a nice scene particularly with the foam they're all playing the foam it's quite a nice scene as well i think we definitely see a lot of the character drama in this story I think particularly with Victoria as I mentioned because she's leaving you get a lot of emotion out of this story it's not I know this story gets a lot of um, people saying it's one of the scariest Doctor Who stories I think I'd maybe give it the scariest classic Doctor Who story maybe but I don't think it's the scariest of all time but still I, I think there is probably more to this story than the scares actually I think in time I think we've all forgotten maybe the emotional drama in this story because there is a lot of character drama in this and I really love the way it's written I really love the way it's directed it's just a really lovely story so I mean it's sort of hard because I don't want the animation quality to, to affect my opinion of this story because it is it is a really lovely story I really did like it I just remember thinking this is, this is definitely one of the best 60s Doctor Who stories. So, in a way, it's kind of sad that it didn't get the best animation treatment. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it would have been better to wait another year and have one every year, but I don't know. It's clearly not the time I mind. I mean, 
thing is, it's always quality over quantity for me. I'd rather you made a quality product and made me wait a bit longer. So that's sort of something that sort of drags this a bit down for me. So I can't, I mean, if I was judging the story, it'd be a straight 10 out of 10. But because I'm judging the animation quality as well, I kind of have to give it a 9. Actually, I'll give it a 9.5 because I think the story and the sort of development for all the characters are really there. It's such a really well written story and emotional. I, and I can, I can feel, even if I can't see Victoria's emotion and Jamie's connection, I can feel that emotion coming through their voices. I think maybe it's because I've been listening to Big Finish a lot recently. I can definitely connect more to the audio. So I definitely think that this is a worthy story. So yeah, if you have not seen it and you are a big fan of Patrick Troughton's era or the 60s era or just classic who in general, or just Doctor Who in general, I would definitely recommend the story. It's a really, really good story. There's a lot of creepy elements, a lot of character drama to it. It's a really lovely story. I really like it. So yeah, 9.5 out of 10. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, why not consider subscribing down below or leaving a comment telling me what your thoughts on the latest Fury from the Deep uh, release is. And sort of, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Bye. Ah, yes. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, why not consider subscribing down below. Who will be in a special?